Good morning all, time to open some post, it's post bag. Now I might open these three uh, simultaneously because I think they're all the same. Uh, integrated circuits it says, let's see what they actually are. And they're little circular PCBs. Let's take a look at these. So these are super capacitor protection PCBs designed specifically for the uh, supercapacitors that have the two screw terminals on the end. So let me just get one of those. And uh, because these capacitors are 2.5 volts, not 2.7, these protection boards actually uh, switch on the uh, discharge resistors. These here, there are three 1R2s in parallel. Um, switch those on at 2.5 volts, of course, not 2.7. Now the question is, do they fit? So let's take these uh, screws out, trying not to let it fall across the terminals and short. Oh, they're longer than I thought they were. Okay, let's take those out, fit one of the boards. Right, break off that little uh, routed where they've cut the board out with a router. And uh, that's marked with a plus, that's marked with a plus, so that's going to go on there. The only thing is it's probably doesn't make much sense to put that on there yet until I've fitted my little blue LEDs. So uh, I'm going to try and find my blue LEDs, get the soldering iron and uh, stick it on there. Right, so we need one of these little blue LEDs. Let's drop one out. Now, as I remember, these have a little arrow. You can probably, well, maybe you can see it there. And uh, the pointy end goes, well, is the cathode. So that will go to the most negative point on the board. Uh, so anode, I'm guessing, will go to positive here. So I'll probably stick it on, on this corner. Uh, cathode will go to what they call negative, and that's routed through the drain of the MOSFET, down through the source, and into the negative pin. So when this MOSFET switches on, there'll be current flowing through these resistors, um, and a voltage across these resistors, of course, and that's when the LED will turn on. So I'm just going to stick it on the corner there. Right, so I'll just scrape away some of the uh, copper here. Let's use this screwdriver to scrape that away. Um, now I found that putting the LED on at an angle worked better last time, but that's because I was using my rather underpowered soldering iron. And now I have a different soldering iron. I actually have a temperature controlled soldering iron. Um, which was a gift from Adam Welch. Uh, yeah, here it is. It's a Katsu 936 digital electronic soldering. Oh, what's that? P work, pre work, station, 60 watt temperature control. Uh, let's get this open. Right, so there's the um, uh, stand, holder, tray. There's a little sponge in there. It's a lot thinner than I'm used to, but I'll give that a try. Uh, here's the temperature control unit um, with the connector there for the iron. And here's the iron, and it says 907907A, uh, 24 volt, 60 watts. So let's get that powered up. Right, that's all plugged in. Uh, let's put the mains on here. Now, what temperature? How do you switch it on first? Is there a power switch? Uh, yes, on the side. What temperature should I put that on? That's set to uh, 400. Oh, and it actually measures the temperature. I'm sorry, but I don't understand. <laughs> I'm not sure why Google felt the need to chime in there. Okay, so that's going up. Now I think 400 might be a bit high. So I'm gonna bring that down to, uh, let's say about 300, 290, that'll do. Let's try that. Oh, is it there already? Oh yeah, that's warm. Um, actually, I probably shouldn't have done that because I was going to change that tip uh, because people say use a chisel tip and there is a chisel tip in here uh, rather than a pointy tip. But actually, I quite like the pointy tip. So I'm going to go ahead with that. Um, yeah, so what I should say is a uh, huge thanks to Adam Welch. Um, Adam's been uh, threatening to send me one of these for a long time and uh, finally has. And so I'm finally going to use a temperature controlled iron. Is it going to make any difference to my soldering? Uh, well, we'll find out. Right, let's get the iron tinned first. Put some iron on the 
uh, solder on the tip. Now this is a uh, leaded solder. I'm not going to bother with lead free. Okay, let's uh, clean that up. That's it. That does feel pretty good. Okay, right. Let's start soldering. I'll get in a bit closer. Right. The first thing I'm going to do because I haven't got three hands is put a bit of solder on the iron, hold the LED down and just try and tack one end. That's probably not going to have it uh, because I haven't put solder on that pad so perhaps I'll do that first. Now maybe uh, 290 is a bit cool for this. Oh no, that's flowed on okay. Okay, let's move the LED across and with that held down I'll just heat that up. Okay, that's gone in. I'll try and solder the other end. Let's do that now. Flip that round. Try and solder this end. Yeah, that's soldered pretty easily actually. Back to this side just to clean that one up. Well, that's it. It's on and that was pretty painless. So awesome. Right, so with that done, um, let's fit that onto the capacitor and start charging it up. So I'll put a link to Adam Welch's channel um, in the description below the video because he does um, some very interesting things with solar power. Uh, he's got his 12 volt solar shed. Of course, he's in the north of England, so he's got exactly the same problem I have, possibly slightly worse with regard to lack of sun. But... Um, his videos are very interesting nonetheless so a link to Adam will be in the description actually one thing I wanted to check was the um, little chip on here now it's got uh, IC up there and Q1 there so it's probably IC so let's see if we can see the part number on that is that 431 I'm seeing well, I'm beginning to think this is probably an LM431 uh, adjustable precision Zener shunt regulator, which can be set to any level greater than 2.5 volts. And this is probably set to 2.5 volts. So that's my guess that this is an LM431 and the circuit is slightly different. There is also a transistor on that board. So it is a bit different to the, the boards that have a voltage detector IC and just a MOSFET. Maybe this is a, a slightly older design. Right, now I've got to charge this, so I'm going to use this power supply. Let's put my 12 volts into there. Um, right, now I've put a diode in here, so we're going to lose about probably three tenths of a volt. So we'll probably need to take it up to about 2.8. Let's bring that down to 2.8. Slightly overshot. Okay, um, and we'll have half an amp of current. So let's get this thing connected up. I'll use these wires. Right, that's it connected. So let's switch on. Uh, that's measuring current. So let's go to voltage. Why is that going down? 1.06. Yeah, that's going down. That's really weird. Well, let's leave that for a while and see whether that it goes back up again. Uh, yes, that seems to be going upwards now, which is uh, better than it going down. But it's very slow, 0.8 volts. It's running at um, 500 milliamps. Uh, we've got the constant current light on this switch. It is very, uh, what's the word, bouncy now. Um, yeah, that is crawling up very slowly, but um, maybe I'll increase the current. Uh, to say an amp let's see what that's like okay 1.3 volts it doesn't seem to be moving much perhaps just need to uh, give it time to sort of i don't know bed in uh well i thought i might get on better if i put my meter probes on the capacitor and measured the voltage there and yes i'm getting something much more sensible half a volt on there and it is creeping up incrementally if I turn that off uh, that sinks back a bit but yeah that's charging I don't know what this voltage here is 1.47 that's one volt of difference with a Shockley diode that doesn't seem quite right but anyway that is charging so I'll leave that to uh, charge for a bit longer um, right just approaching one volt 
there we go one volt um but i really need to move this off my bench now because uh i want to film some other posts i'm seeing i'll see if i can sort of lay it out somewhere else not that there is somewhere else and uh, continue charging that so this item that i opened is this it's two pieces car capacitor not sure why car actually i think it's because they're thinking that these are going to be used in um, car audio systems to get the extra bass. Uh, 2.5 volt protection board, balancing limit, 3.5 centimeters diameter, presumably universal new. Um, I bought two of these, so I bought four from this seller. I have got other ones, actually. Um, $2.56 for two pieces, free shipping. And these came from mm, CC or Chi Chi 10086. Right, I think what I'll do is I'll just move a bit further along the desk, use my old cutting mat, uh, have a bit of a tidy up of all this stuff, and continue. Right, this is the next one, and it's a bit of a giveaway because it says 2.25 inch, 8 ohm, 8 ohm, 15 watt um, speakers. Now there should be two in here. Does it say quantity? Oh yeah, quantity two. I'm hoping there are two this time, because the last time I ordered these speakers, well, there was only one. I thought the uh, DVM in the side of the shop would be quite entertaining. Uh, can't do that, can I? So we can see how far that has charged. Now, have we got two this time? Certainly hope so. One, two. Good. Because the seller did say they'd send another one on, but they never did. Oh, they're in little uh, trays. That's nice. So, two more of these. Oh, that looks like it's got either some dust or some mould. Oh, the magnets are sticking together. Mould on it. Um, they do look like they've corroded a bit. But, uh, yeah, no, they should be fine. Oh, yeah, that's just dust, I think. Um, good, so two speakers now, rather than the one that I had before. Yeah, I really like these things. Uh, loud speakers and amplifiers. Takes me back to my early days of electronics when I built audio amplifiers which um well they always seem to catch fire my audio amplifiers i'm not quite sure why but uh yeah that's rather beautiful isn't it that speaker or two speakers as it is now uh so here in the project box we've got the supercapacitors this bluetooth uh, amplifier board the original speaker and now two more speakers now i don't need three speakers but I can always repurpose one for something else. Um, I have actually bought more of these capacitors because um, I had originally ordered eight, only six, uh, well, six were from one seller, six turned up. The other two never turned up. I got a refund on those. I have actually ordered eight more. Um, they're slightly different. Uh, the reason I've done that is because I'm kind of half thinking in the back of my head of doing something like a, a super capacitor powered 100 watt LED flashlight or something daft like that. Right, so we've seen these before. I mean, there isn't much to say about them. They're 8 ohm, 15 watt, uh, 2.25 inches, I think, across the flats there. Actually, I could check that. Um, yeah, actually, they seem a little bit bigger than that. I wonder if that's a, a metric dimension. Uh, oh, yes, it is. It's um, almost exactly, well, it is exactly. 60 millimeters so the two loudspeakers um, are these 2.25 inch 8 ohm 15 watt full range audio speaker loudspeaker woofer mm, not really horn for sony six dollars 80 each so i spent something like 13 dollars 60 free shipping and these ones came from best for sell Still really surprised about this. Um, I've got 1.9 volts here, 1.95, but over three volts being um, shown on the output of this power supply. That's a whole volt, more than a volt of drop on that Shockey diode. Oh, my meter just turned off. Let's turn it back on. Um, so I think I'm just going to replace that Shockey diode, actually, because that can't be right. More than a volt drop there. Let's get another one. Right, so I've got a few more here, so let's take another one out, uh, put it in there and see what the uh, potential across there is. Just trying to be a little bit careful not to short everything out while I do this. So let's take that one out, put this one in. So it goes into positive, it's 
my torch fell over. It's facing forwards with pointy end there. That's positive. That should be okay. Let's clip that back on there. Uh, switch on. That's current. There's still a very large voltage difference over 3 volts, under 2 volts. I must admit, I don't really fully understand that. Unless there's an enormous voltage being dropped in these wires. I mean, they probably are a bit rubbish, these cables, but that's a lot of volts. Right, we're getting close to the 2.5 volts on that supercapacitor, uh, 2.43. Um, this is showing current now, and that's falling because this is in constant voltage. Uh, it's, if I could get this thing to sit there, 3.33 volts is the, uh, yes, that's the voltage I set. The current is falling. As the current falls, of course, the voltage across these rather poor crocodile clip wires I think reduces so actually the voltage on the capacitor is still going up even though this is putting out a fixed voltage um, and the current is decaying away so I'm just taking this up to 2.5 very very slowly uh, just waiting for that blue light to come on uh, right 2.51 volts on my meter of course there's no guarantee that that's absolutely precise uh, still got 760 milliamps flowing around the circuit into the capacitor so i'm just going to let this go a little bit further and uh, wait for that blue light to come on now i've just been trying to calculate uh, the current flowing we've got three 1.2 ohm resistors on there all in parallel uh, oh that's my result let's do uh, 1.2 divided by three so we've got 0.4 ohms 400 milliohms and it's 2.5 volts, so I equals V over R. So it'd be 2.5 volts uh, over the resistance, which is 0.4 ohms. When those resistors um, are dissipating current, when that MOSFET comes on, 6.25 amps. That does seem rather a lot, but uh, yeah, that's quite a current that that circuit, that protection circuit, can dissipate. So the capacitor voltage is up to 2.53 now. And uh, it's just given me a thought actually. What I could try, I think, is attach this directly to the output of the power supply and it should draw virtually no current until I hit a certain voltage. Then it should draw far more current than this can supply because it should switch that MOSFET on. So what I could do is just raise the voltage on here until this thing uh, for, uh, draws so much current that this goes into current limit and see roughly when this uh, trigger circuit is actually going to trigger. I think I might give that a try. So I've just clipped um, my crop clips to this board. I've set this for 2.4 volts so this shouldn't switch on uh, and about half an amp. So let's turn that on. So that's in constant voltage. There's no current flowing. Uh, 2.4 volts. Let's see when it goes into constant current and half an amp flows. So 241, let's raise that up to 2.5. Uh, still in constant voltage, 251, 252, 253. Uh, 2.6, and that hasn't actually apparently triggered yet. Let's keep going. Well, that doesn't look very promising, does it? Because we're up to 2.7 volts now. And this thing still hasn't gone into constant current. Um, ah, we do have 300 milliamps flowing. That's interesting. So let's go back to voltage if I can. 2.75, 380 milliamps flowing. 2.8 volts, 400 milliamps flowing. That's really interesting. These aren't very accurate, are they? Um, 2.9 volts oh, okay so it's now uh, limiting at 2.82 volts that's gone into current limit so that's now drawing the half an amp so this must have turned on those resistors let's just see if they feel warm uh, yeah sort of warm they're only dissipating half an amp of course what about the MOSFET oh yeah that's getting quite hot actually the MOSFET yeah, so that hasn't actually triggered until it's got to 
2.8 volts. Uh, that's not very good as a 2.5 volt protection circuit, is it? Um, okay, well, I've got some more of these um, in these other packets. I might as well open them and test them all for their conduction voltage. This one's 2.8. Let's switch that one off. Uh, so let's open this one. Two more circuits in here. Let's see if they're identical. Uh, they're very similar. They've got one R2 resistors again. So let's uh, connect these up and see what the voltages are. Right, actually, although that says 2.8 on the power supply, um, if I connect my meter across the actual capacitor connections, I'm getting 2.546. So if these are all roughly the same, that capacitor should go up to 2.54, and then the protection circuit should kick in. So I'll go back to charging the capacitor now, I think. So I'm bringing the capacitor back up. I'm expecting the circuit to kick in at about 2.55. I must admit, I did find it a bit alarming that the MOSFET was getting a lot hotter than these resistors. Uh, so the MOSFET's on resistance must actually be quite high. It's possible I could take one of these resistors or even two of them off because we don't really need six amps of discharge current. That MOSFET doesn't seem to be capable of dissipating that. So I could, yeah, I could just take one of these resistors off to reduce the current flow through these resistors and sort of spread the heat between this side of the board in the MOSFET and this side of the board in those resistors. Um, well, it's got two 2.55 and this blue LED is not coming on, but that board's getting quite warm. So I suspect that this doesn't switch quite as sort of distinctly as the other protection boards on the other modules. Um, I think the warmth is coming from the MOSFET. I just don't think the MOSFET's turning on hard enough to develop enough voltage across those three resistors to actually light up that LED. So I think the protection circuit is working, it's dissipating heat, but more in the MOSFET than in the resistors. So I don't know, I don't think that's going to work. Um, that blue LED is going to work in quite the same way as it did on the other modules. Now the other thing of course is that the uh, blue LED may not be quite so keen to light up at 2.5 volts. I mean I don't think it's getting anywhere near that because of this uh, problem with the MOSFET getting warm and the resistors not getting warm. Uh, it may not light up as much at 2.5 volts as it does at 2.7. So the blue LED thing I don't think is going to work here. I think it might be worth looking at this circuit in more detail um, just to see how it's functioning, put more voltmeters on it to see what volt drop we've got across the MOSFET, what volt drop we've got across those resistors. It does seem to be um, holding it down to about 2.55, possibly creeping up to 2.56. Uh, so it's kind of doing its job, but it's nowhere near as good a circuit as on those other protection boards. Anyway, that's it really. Um, these are today's post bag items, the protection boards and the speakers. Uh, big thanks as always to Patreon patrons. Um, if you'd like to support my channel via Patreon, uh, click this here. Another couple of videos up here if you'd like to watch more of my stuff. And my face here is my subscribe button. Cheerio.